So welcome to the Hustle Nepal podcast. Today we have a very special guest with us, Himanshu Singh Pradhan. Based in Australia, he is the CEO of All Items Business Group, consisting of Nurse Aid Nursing Agency, Nurse Aid Care, and Cocoon Education and Migration. He was also a former live TV presenter in Himalaya Television and a former radio presenter. We've been talking about this for a couple of years now, and we're finally here. So very glad to have you with us. Well, thank you, and um, it's uh, my pleasure being here. Um, it's been a while. We've been talking about this, and uh, we wanted to do this for a while. Uh, we tried doing this, um, you know, um, <coughs> uh, via online mediums as well. But yeah, I'm here, and it's really good. So let's start with your journey, right? Yeah, yeah. So you have multiple business verticals in Australia. So I want to know how did your journey begin in Australia? Well, you see, um, when you go to Australia, right, um, and when you are in a different country, a different land, um, you always probably majority of people they start from basics, right? So I started from basics as well, right? uh, working in. Um, Kitchen as a kitchen hand. Now, if people don't know what kitchen hand is, um, you wash utensils or you do, um, uh, you know, vegetable cuts or all those kinds of stuffs, right? Um, I did uh, cleaning for a while, uh, did housekeeping and work in retail. Now, from there on, um, you know, as you see in the Maslow's hierarchy, you want to climb up the ladder. So, um, and then um, I did. Um, you know, uh, think that okay, uh, you gotta climb up the ladder, do something. So I uh, had two options. Option one was um, getting um, a stable job, either in the government or um, a um, you know a corporate uh, or start up one's own business. But when when I thought of okay, starting a business, um, I was still working in a corporate. Right, um, um, it's it's called Costco Wholesale, and I used to look um, after the regional marketing um, of Costco Wholesale of a certain region. Right, um, so that that was that. Um, then I went to my now partners uh, in business because a team is very important. As you guys are doing this, you have a team. Um, so I went to people that I trusted, I I loved, I believed in. So I went there, I pitched my idea, we came up with different ideas and we settled down in one idea. And um, so, so we created a team um, and the team trusted me enough, uh, which is called, in the corporate language, we call it the board. So the board trusted me enough to uh, call me the CEO of the company. And um, yes, it was difficult during the um, COVID scare, uh, the pandemic, but, um, Due to the teamwork, um, we did, um, you know, do good, and uh, now we're here in Nepal, um, trying to establish our own uh, uh, education migration. So yeah, that that's 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 the journey. That's that's how I'm, I'm putting it in very short, you know. So how long ago was this? Well, when you went to Australia? Well, <clears throat> this was 2011 November, so it's around 10, 11 years, right? So it's been 10, 11 years since so, I went to uh, Australia. When you went to Australia, did you have any cultural shock? Well, yes, of course. Like when you go to Australia, you will have a, or, or any different country, you will have yeah. a cultural shock. So even if you go to China, you might have a culture, cultural shock. If you go to India, probably not because of Bollywood, you're watching Bollywood all the time. Of course, we've, sure. we've been watching Western movies for a while. We've been watching Hollywood movies for a while. But when you go uh, to Australia, uh, the accent is different. Right, they speak. Uh, they speak English, but they've got different accent. Um, the humor. Every culture has different humor. So, the humor that you have in Nepal, you know, the jokes that you crack, the Australian um, person wouldn't, you know, laugh at. And the jokes they crack, the people here in Nepal may not laugh at. You know, because that's that's what the culture shock is. Also, there are other factors, you know, um, you know, it's more systematic. So you need to learn the system. You need to learn what and how to communicate. That's one of the major uh, things that you need to do. Right. So I know that you're a firm believer in everybody needs to go abroad, even if it's only for a couple of years. So I want you to elaborate on that. Why is that? Well, the thing is, you see, um, let's 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 go um, a bit in the past. 
um, uh, in Nepal. So what has happened is um, Nepal was not decentralized and it is not still decentralized as much as we like. So people from different regional parts of Nepal came to city, which is Kathmandu at that time. So any person that did not come to Kathmandu at that stage and that point did not know lots of things. Was n they were not exposed to probably good roads or vehicles or good shops or probably even restaurants. You know, this is um, say 25, 30 years ago, yeah. right? So those people who, who are not exposed um, to, uh, you know, probably you can call it development, um, were deemed, uh, you know, not smart, right? Now, that Kathmandu or Nepal has slowly, is still slowly going towards decentralization. The uh, lots of major cities that have seen, that have seen roads and vehicles, good schools, good restaurants and everything. What has happened now is whoever is in Nepal, now you can take this as a parallel um, scenario. So whoever is in Nepal, if they don't go abroad and they don't see that development, they don't get that exposure, they're not smart enough for the world, right? So yes, we have everything here in Nepal, right? In Kathmandu, you get everything. But one thing we don't know, Yep. is how systematic things are. So, number one, especially for guys like us, like you, we need to go abroad so that we are away from our love, from, from the love and the, the protection, the cover that we have. So we get out of the cover and we are now in the wild, wild west, a wild jungle there. So now you fight your battle yourself. Once you fight a battle yourself, you become a true man or a true woman, right? When, when you come back, you learn a lot of things. Say so you learn how to work hard, you learn um, standing on your own feet without anyone's help. Here, you, you, as soon as you get out from your, your house, or you know, you know someone, you know, or your parents know someone. So you have that protection, your, your, the net. There, you don't know anyone. And you fight to learn, right? You learn to communicate. You get exposure. You learn the systems, you know? And you, you see more opportunities there. You see a different perspective of the world. Right now, you're in Nepal, you're seeing one perspective. You go to the West, you see a different perspective. Probably you go to the Middle East, you see a different perspective. So you, the more exposure one has, the more smart you become, right? So that is why, um, of course, it is on, on an individual, if you want to go abroad, you know, you want to come back or you, you want to stay there, right? The world has, it's, 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 it's a globalized world now. And if you even want to contribute here in your own motherland, you don't have to be physically present these days, right? You can create employment wherever you are in that sense even if you're in mars you can create employment or you can you can help the economy here so the 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 the, the fact or the things that people say oh you, you you're going abroad and you're staying there that's not a bad thing right especially for a country like us which literally runs on remittance or ideas yeah that's 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 the reason that if you see good businesses here or small small scale businesses there's, there's a restaurant here that has multiple franchises here. I don't want to take the name, but there are multiple franchises. That person himself came back from Australia. And he could scale up that business because he went there, he learned the system, he learned the way, he learned the hard work, he got the exposure, came back and contributed to the economy. So it's more about getting exposure to understand what you're competing against, basically, and knowing the system as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so any top tips for anyone going abroad, whether it's Australia, USA, wherever? Well, uh, the, first, the first thing, um, well, it's not a tip, but what I'm trying to say is if you're going to Australia or anywhere else, 
the first thing you need to do is you need to research which in your generation is a big big lacking factor right you go if you're going to australia or if you're going to the united states of america you need to research where I'm, where i am going where what is the what what is united states of america what is australia what state i'm going to what does that state mean to you what's the job opportunities like what college am i going to right what degree am i taking what is my goal so the first thing is you, you got to know what is you, what is my goal am i going to come back to nepal or am i going to stay there and do something am i going for a green card or permanent residency or am i just going for education coming back to nepal that is your first thing that you need to ask yourself determine what you want to do then take action accordingly number 1 then you research so okay i'm going for my education only so when you go for your education only then you, you need to research what 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 level university am i going to what sort of fees am i uh, you know uh, paying um is that degree or is that education that i'm going to take i'm uh, going to be valuable for me in 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 a longer run even if i come back to nepal now if i'm going for a permanent residency where should i go to what courses should i take you know those are those are the major things that you you need to ask yourself do some research and then take your action accordingly all right so what you mean is uh you got to work backwards from the end goal yes that's right that's right so you got to know what you want you you, you right? got to know what what you yeah. want all right uh so let's uh dive into business yeah yeah uh starting a business in australia uh versus nepal you've done both right yeah now. yeah uh what's different well australia everything's online right you don't have to say for for me to register a business here in nepal i had to at least you know run around for a, for a week right uh, and i was lucky that i i ha- only had to run around for a week people who have to run around for months right um in australia everything is online you want to register a business if you got like uh, it's around 600 dollars i think um you register for a australian business number that's abn um or if you want to do a company uh, a register a company it's called acn a shared company number I, that's what i think so you just register online and your business and then you check your business name and your business na- if your business name um uh, is not taken by anyone else you can register a business and then you go and you can start a business right away so the process is basically more efficient right it's very efficient you know it's it will take you literally probably 15 minutes or a half an hour to register a business right now then after you there when you are doing your business or you you conducting your business of course it's the same um, same formula in anywhere you know you're doing business for a client right you you you're providing service or you're selling service or you're selling goods that's that's what business is right so um it's the same thing but the way you do it is different you know that's that's a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, person you let you let me read on that oh uh, yeah say a person what what if what if there is a person who is selling fruits in 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 in, in a two wheeler in, in a cycle in a bicycle and a person who is sitting down in you know millions of dollars of a uh, corporate business it's the same thing it's the same thing it's just this difference of the scale right that person has bought that fruit put it on his um, you know push bike uh if you know sure now we call it push bike here we call it bicycle put the baskets in and then he knows or that person knows where my target market is he has put his value in there and he start he started selling it right entrepreneur same thing someone in a corporate business worth millions of dollars probably billions of dollars is doing the same thing in a bigger scale so there's no difference what about the culture here and there about you know work ethics well work ethics is um um uh, uh, of course it's very different yeah um here the problem um is when you go somewhere and when you want to talk to someone and and say i'm meeting you for a certain purpose um 
I will be talking one hour of bullshit and then I come to uh, the real point. Whereas the culture there is you don't have time. So you go there, hi there, this is this, uh, it's a wonderful weather, how's things, everything. Then you straight away come to business, you finish your business, have a cup of coffee, get out. Alright, so All right. It's, it's about efficiency basically. It's about efficiency. Yeah. Uh, the timing... So would, would you say that people in Nepal don't value time? Well, it's, it's sort of people don't know the value of time. It's not okay. um, people don't value time. People don't know the value of time. It's all relaxed and chilled and, and it so works there's out. No urgency. There's no urgency. Yeah, and it works out for people, right? Your normal office time starts from 10. You finish at 5, right? And when you go to office, you don't straight away start your work, right? You sit down, you have a cup of coffee and, you know, and then you, you, you hang out and, um, and then you start your work. Probably it's not like that in all the uh, organizations. But it's, it's that, and then you go for lunch, and then you come back, and you know, uh, five or six, and then you come back. But what I'm trying to say is everything that is done here is not cut to cut, right? It is a long, lengthy process, and if it works, it works. I'm not criticizing the way it is, right? It is what it is. It is it's what a, it is. It's a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing. Yeah, that's the cultural thing over there, that's the cultural thing over here, and it is working out for, for, for Nepal. Yeah, true. Uh, so talking about starting a business, uh, what do you think is the most important thing that you got to keep in mind when starting a business? When you are starting a business, yeah. the most important thing is your team. You know, business is not done and cannot be done by one person only, right? right. Um, and the, the, the second thing that you need to understand is, are you going to be, are you going to go to a business with an employee mind, mindset or are you going to go there as a business mindset? Yeah. That's very true, and I don't think that the listeners are going to get it. Uh, let me let me elaborate. Let me elaborate. Can you please elaborate? So, lots of businesses fail. Where where your teams? The first thing is team. Let me go from the team, right? When you start a business, you can't you can't be omnipresent. You can't be everywhere, right? Yeah. So the first thing is you pick the right team, trustworthy team, and that team picks you as well. It's not only you pick the team, the, pe- the team picks so you. It's, as a, well. two-way stream. it's a two way stream. Because when you say, okay, I come to you and I say, okay, you want to be in my team, it's not only me picking you. When you say yes, it's you picking me as well. And you got to be committed to each other. Yeah, committed to each other, right? The thrush factor. Yeah. Then comes the division of work. The work needs to be divided according to the capability of a human being. Say, a team, in a team. Say, if you're good in IT, I can't, yes, of course, we can switch roles, but if you're, if you're best in IT, I can't ask you to do accounts. Of course, you can help in accounts, but you, 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 your bread and butter is IT. You will be more efficient in IT. So can I, can I summarize that as you got to put the right pieces in the puzzle? In the puzzle. Yeah. The right person at the right place. Yeah, true. All right? Yeah. If someone um, uh, has capability of bringing investors, that person needs to be put in that basket. You know, you can't ask a, a heart surgeon to go and uh, you know have, do a brain surgery. Uh, so would you say? I mean, it's pretty obvious at this point. But would you say self awareness and empathy are important? As you got well, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that point. Let me, let me, let me, let me finish this, right? So, uh, your your first question, right? So, for business, it's the team, right? Now you have the right team. Then what do you need is the right mindset, right? Now, lots of businesses fail. Where and when? I'll, I'll tell you why lots of businesses, small businesses and startups fail, is people um, go and employ themselves in the business rather than run a business. So when you run a business, right, of course, when you are a startup, you, you work by yourself. You, the, the entire team works together. But then once you start scaling up, you think as a businessman or a business person, then, or an entrepreneur, then as an employee. An employee mindset is when you go inside a, a, a business, you draw some salary out of it, you're happy with it and you don't want to scale it. A business mindset is you're ready to take risk. You're, you Probably you're drawing salary, probably you're drawing dividend and you want to scale it up. 
and you want to you don't want to do all the work all by yourself you know you delegate the work to people so that you are free to think about scaling up the business so you're uh, more offensive right sorry in business uh, you believe that you got to be more offensive as a as an entrepreneur like what what i mean is um in business yes in a startup right you do have to work hard from scratch True. right you need to know all the parts of the business but when you grow you need to have people that can help you lots of now now no, the difference i'm i'm telling you the difference lots of people when they think they are in um they they, are, they think they have a business and they are employed over there they are running the business and they are in every department and what happens manage. yeah micro manager and what happens is if that person is sick i has to go somewhere due to some reason so the business needs to go around go on now if that person has not um you know created or developed someone you know who could uh, who could you know learn the same thing and you know contribute to the business and and the motivation is a big part as well you know when you are a business person right or when you are an entrepreneur when you are running a business or or a team like this right sometimes that two like what happens is once a peer to peer group management and once a subordinate management now if you have subordinates it's 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 a different story but when you have a peer to peer say you are all a partners you all are directors right the motivation factor the factor where you need to keep your mouth shut the factor where you need to know when to speak up and knowing the weaknesses and the strengths of the people working with you is the major factor yeah to bring the business up yeah that's that's exactly what i was going with when i asked you uh, about empathy because you got to know your partners as well yeah. and self awareness because you got to know yourself as well yeah that's that's uh, you you got to know yourself you got to know your strengths and your weaknesses if you have your weaknesses you work on it and you 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 try and make it your strength um and having said that you need to know your partners you need to know your clients right so it, a business is like a war okay. and as a as as a business director or a ceo you are the king all right and you have to have a minister a general you know um uh to run so take a business as a small entity this is this is not me saying it this is chanakya saying it in arthashastra so a business is like running a country but it's on a smaller unit right your clients are your your subjects like probably you can't call them your subjects but say if it was your your if you were the king and and if 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 you were the king and if it was your country it was and you had your subjects and a king is liable to the subjects and if a king does not take the right decision doesn't have a good general doesn't have good ministers you know um the king actually is or fails the other thing is well and i'm bringing you back to this say in 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 the old times the king was never present in the palace they were always they were always going out for wars they were leading wars right so they needed right people back in the palace to run the country right so that's where you need a good team right take it as a small country you're running a small country that's what it is so so what i'm getting from all this is uh you're a firm believer of a business needs to have a system which makes it independent of its founder or ceo that's right if you have a look at the big corporations yeah right any big corporation you take it right none of the corporations <clears throat> say you have say a apple store here for just for example you know the ceo of apple is not here right he probably doesn't know the name of the person running this place but it's running according to their standards because there is a system in place All right, all right. That's uh, so. This brings me to scaling. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about starting a business. So, what about scaling a business? 
Uh, what are some things that you need to keep in mind? See, the major thing in business is um, excuse me um, <clears throat> revenue, right? So you need to to and and there are, there are a few basic things that you need to keep in mind during uh, you know if you want to increase your revenue. Number one is your persistence. You're in business. You know, lots of young people, they come into business, they want to do business, and then what they do is they run for six months, or they run for a year, and they go, oh, no, I'm not making money, and and, 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 and they leave the business, right? In, in the same place, if you run that business for three years or four years, persistently, if you, if you, if you believe in it, the business will run for a while. And it will it will prosper. So you're mixing in patience as well, persistence and patience, yeah, right? So your question was about uh, scaling, scaling right? Yeah. So the first thing is your persistence in business. So once you have that persistence, then is your clients. You never forget your clients. You know you you see and you do things that is um, for the clients. Yeah. You you're here to sell your goods uh, or, or or sell your service to the client. Say and 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 if you have one client today, and the and and your first client or the second client or the, or your older clients slowly start diverting themselves to other businesses, you don't forget them. You know, lots of people make that mistake as well. Oh, I've got a new client. I don't have to worry about the old client. Every client. Every individual is in important, as important. Does not matter if that client is bringing you one dollar or one rupee, or bringing you a million dollar. Everyone is equal, right? Once you have that, once you have persistence, once you have that, and then comes system. You need system. You need the team, you know, and the motivation, right? That will generate your revenue. Right? Probably not today, probably not tomorrow, probably in a year, probably in two years, but it will generate revenue. Once it generates that revenue, then you go towards scaling. And when I say scaling, you don't put that revenue in only one basket. You put that revenue in different baskets. Diversifying. Diversifying your business. Because um, you don't know what's going to happen. Business is such a thing. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, you, you go to a job, you know, I have a job for another, if I don't do anything wrong, I have another 20 years, or I get promoted. Business is not that. Today I might be the CEO of all items, tomorrow I may not. Tomorrow I may have another business, you know. Or you may have no business at all. Mm, but you may have no business at all. So you diversify business to scale up the business. But the major point to scale up, scaling up is your system, is your people that work with you, is your team, your partners, your shareholders, and your client. If you can make them happy, right? If you, if you do things for them and not being selfish, right? That is, so what Chanakki says is if a king is selfish, Right? Then that's not a good king. Right? The king needs to be for for the ministers, for the people. Right? Exactly. That is what it is. So th there's a saying in business, uh, which uh, your statement reminded me of. Uh, you don't, the, your employees don't work for you. You work for your employees. So you basically agree with that. Well, I work, I, I, I agree on that. And what I also would like to add on that is your employees don't work for you. Uh, your employees should not work because of you. All right? Your employees should work for you. Or the, your employees should work for themselves rather. Yeah. Right? Okay. And for the greater goal of the company. So you're talking about goal alignment, basically. Goal alignment. Yeah. So say you're my employee, for instance. You should be working uh, not because of me, you know? So you're my employee and uh, say I've given you a task. So you shouldn't be doing that task because you're afraid or you fear me or you fear of getting fired or you fear of, um, uh, you know, not getting a promotion. You should be working because you, your employee should be working because your employee thinks that if this company goes up 
I will go up with this company and my contribution is value. So your employee is working for you and not because of you. So it's basically for you and for themselves as well. For themselves yeah, as well. So it's on, yeah. uh, the onus is on the CEO to make, yeah. to make the yeah. structure that way. And, 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 and the employee will start contributing more uh, towards the goal of the company. And as the company grows, the employee grows. Right? And that should be the mindset. So you're in the service industry, right? Yeah. So as a CEO, how do you ensure that we're talking about systems? So yeah. As a CEO, how do you t- how do you ensure that the quality which is being provided to the end consumer is up to par with the quality that you want your brand to reflect? Well, this is this again comes back comes back to the team. If you have the right team in place, you don't have to worry about it. Right? Of course you you do talk to the clients. You do. Um, you can't just say. You just can't just leave everything. You do have a hawk eye, right? You do take um, feedbacks from the client, feedbacks from the employee. You have the major thing is communication. You have a great. You have, need to have good communication with your clients. You need to have the uh, good communication with your employees. And the main thing in business is solving problems. That's all. As soon as, say, you're, you're, you're doing a business, as soon as you walk into, say, you have a shop, why do you have a shop? Because somebody needs to buy something. That's their problem. And you have that something that they can come and purchase from you. Now, the problem they have is they don't have that goods. And they may have to walk, say, a kilometer away just to get that goods. But you are there. So you're solving their problem. Same thing in service industry, you're solving a client's problem. You're solving your employee's problem. You know, every day you walk into your office, the first thing you do, or the, the major thing that you do is solving problems. Then comes the management side and the accounting side and everything. So, in coming back to your question, how we ensure um, that we are providing a good service or the, 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 the service to the part is you have good communication with the client. You check, right? You have a system in place. You have a good team in place. You, it's, it's a system that works, right? So um, it's like, say, the system and the team, they come in a parallel um, place and it works by itself. And that is your goal as a CEO or a director uh, of the company where you need to create a system, uh, a a balance where everybody works for one goal and um, yes, you need to have a check and balance system, you know, but as a CEO or a director or as a CEO or a director, you need to sit, you need to be inside that uh, ecosystem and be disciplined in the same way. Right. So, last question for today. Uh, any message for the teenagers or listeners in their early 20s? Well, especially in Nepal, uh, you guys need to bloody stop using TikToks and Clubhouse. You guys are fucked. Literally. Right? You guys have been using... Um, I use TikTok just to see how um, um, useful this could be. Yes, you can get information. But what happens is this is made. The algorithm is made to engage you. So the more you swipe, the more you want to swipe. Right? Clubhouse is such a great platform, actually. But what we are doing in Clubhouse, especially the Nepali teenagers, is um, we are using it to play Mafia, which I used to play when I was in grade 2 or grade 3. And... 16 year old or 17 year old or 18 year old um, they are playing mafia in clubhouse wasting the time to be honest you don't have time to be honest you know what your competition is is not around you the whole world is a competition at the moment and you have to prepare yourself for that competition Of course, your school has created that base for you. But if you do not, you know, um, develop yourself, 
If you do not utilize your time, by the time you're 30, you're a big fucking failure. Half of the teenagers, they don't know what they're going to do in life. Living in their parents' home. Driving up the car or the vehicle that the parents are at both for them. And they fought that. It's not yours. You gotta do, you gotta earn by yourself. That is yours. Your say your money is the one that have that you have earned by your brain or your hands, not what your parents have earned for you. And that is what where we are failing, the teenagers. So focus from day one. Of course, I'm not saying, oh, you got to be so serious and, you know, don't party. Bloody enjoy your life. Enjoy the time we have, right? I don't mean that. Enjoy because that age is not going to come back. Enjoy as much as you want. But then do not waste your time bullshit, you know? Instead of doing that, read an article, read a book or listen to a podcast or, or learn a technical skill. That is what the teenagers of now need to know. Learn how to speak in English. I know you guys have been to boarding schools. Not all of you have been to boarding schools. But, you know, speaking in English is a skill that you will need for, for uh, your entire life. Learn a different language, probably Chinese, probably Russian. You know, but, uh, uh, learn your hobby. Be good in your hobby. And what you need to know is life is not as easy as you guys think. And this is only for the teenagers in Nepal. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Um, um, this because we are doing this in Nepal. I'm saying this in, in for the teenagers in Nepal. Have fun, enjoy your time, enjoy what you want to do, but do not waste your time in fucking bullshit, right? Have a focus, have a goal, finish your goal, then enjoy. Yeah. All right. So that's a wrap. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for being here. And. Um, so I'm, I'm, I apologize for swearing, but you know no, this, no, is, this is a fine. casual, yeah. this is a casual um, podcast, yeah, yeah. and uh, I don't think so. It's um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a crime. Um, but what I want to say is um, the youths here in Nepal are fantastic and brilliant, right? All of them are doing fantastic jobs. But what I'm trying to say is be focused, learn to research, learn to know things. That's all. Yeah, so Thank you heard it here. Yep. Manchester Singh Pradhan, guys. Thanks a lot.